I was like, ah, inside this school, me yeah. and that material show. Or material don't show. No, I don't speak to you. <laughs> it's supposed, it's supposed ball and it's supposed blast to well. Distinctions are not just awarded. They don't want yeah. to just give it to anybody. Hi guys, and welcome to this vlog. So today is very special because I actually have a guest with me. If you're in for medical school, you are going to appreciate this person. Guys, let's give a virtual round of applause to Hi guys, thank you for having me. It can be difficult achieving those high scores, but it's possible. And I think the next I talked about was strategy. So under the strategy now, one would have to be flexible. Um, I realized different different levels in dif in medical school would require different approaches. Now again, there are some general principles that will guide you. Hard working, you manage your time well, you know, do all the, but then because when we are coming into a new class, mm. like when we're entering here tonight, everybody will come tell you, Oh, the fact that you are good in physics, chemistry, and That's biology mean, doesn't really. mean that you shine. And then sometimes you're just discouraged, they're like, Oh my god, this is a new game entirely. And then we pass part one, and then you enter your four, you're like, Oh, drop all your distinctions <laughs> and everything. This one, all your four, we all go in the game. And frankly, it's true, it's true, it might be painful to ourselves, but that's the truth. So every new level would require new tactics, you know, new skills and different ways to approach them. So you must be flexible. If you've come into the clinical classes, for instance, for those in preclinicals, you've been used to reading your books in your house and you're getting very high scores. If you come into the clinical classes, it's not possible. If you don't come around, it will show. By the time you're performing your examinations during the OSCE exam, it will show. It will show. You either be G3 or the lecturers will be looking at you like, what are you doing? That's not what every other person has been doing. So now you see that for the clinical class, it, it moves away from just purely um, personal learning. Sort of, you can be very self motivated in preclinical and do so well. But for the clinical classes, you have to be around the hospital. You have to be around. So now some people find it difficult adjusting, especially guys. That's you know, guys. For the ladies, it, I don't know. It feels. It looks as though God just you fed them with that special ability. They are everywhere. Calls, they are going everywhere. You find them in the hospital. And then people like our big our big uncle, Dr. Conta. Sometimes you'll be looking for the guys, like guys, where are you? Call them. Always on looking phone. for the guys. Call them. And he on keeps phone. on calling Call the them guys. On. Because it looks like you know guys not tend to around. you don't want to come around. I, I really don't know why. So but you have to push yourself. You'd have to push yourself to be there. Not just because you want to pass, because you're dealing with human lives. So some of the things you would see after school, you would have probably experienced it just once as a mm. medical student. And at that point in time, the split seconds you have to take some decisions will be based on, you know, those things you learn. So you must give room for flexibility if you want to be successful at every stage. Some persons did well in year one, frankly speaking, and then the preclinicals became sort of a challenge. It's just adaptation. No one has a special brain because in medical school all of us i assure you who were champions in our secondary schools they were coming from jagaban you know very <laughs> big men and women but then you have to adapt based on the level that you're coming into and then um for the second thing under our strategy will be try and try not to be competitive now I put this I put this Sorry, sorry, can you say that again? Yes, try not to be competitive. Guys, so sorry to interrupt uh verse here. I remember in year five pediatrics exam, gospel came to my room, this room, knocked on my door. I opened gospel what's up? A few days before our exam, and gospel told me that Nini, this particular question they like to ask. I just want to tell you that there's part, something in particular they look out for. This, 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 this. If you see it, write it like that. Ah. I was like, hmm. I just came and told Sonia, I told people that I was reading with that. I see what God told me. I wonder why he just came to. Guys, I went to the exam hall. I sat down there and they brought in that question. In pediatrics, when they release your results, they tell you the marks you got in each question that you answered. We're only two that got 10 over 10 in that particular question. And it was because of what gospel told me. And that's one of the reasons I brought him here because in as much as the people are good, 
they like to do as if you are fighting for something which maybe I understand, but gospel didn't do that. And so I really, 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 really appreciate it. Because I haven't told you this, and that's really bad of me. But I'm really grateful. Yeah. So please, can we continue? Yeah, so um, medical school naturally, naturally, it's, it's competitive. So you have to fight it. Now, it, it's something that, if I'll be honest, I've had to deal with, especially in the early part of medical school. People are like holding my. When I came here, one now, I was shocked one day. Somebody said they are going for nine class. Me, I came from a school. Me, I don't know basic students everywhere. They said classes were full. I'm like, ah, inside this school. Me, I'm just in the hostel here, reading on my bed. So, and I went to class one night. My God, come and see Israel. Israel used to read that. That Israel is our person. MBS twenty four. So, so yeah, it, it feels like everyone was chasing after something, and then you have to you have to pinch yourself at some point. Like, okay, we all have one goal: we want to become doctors. So there is no need to hoard materials. There is no need to hoard information. Now, this this goes two ways. Um, I would I would also advise you're not overly dependent on people mm -hmm. because you now start making excuses why you did not do oh somebody hoarded the material that's why I did not pass. They did not share yeah, they did not share this the and then you start blaming people. That was something Dr. Nosa told me early on that um people would always hurt stuff. It's not your responsibility to start pointing fingers. So if you want to be outstanding, whether material show or material don't show. No, I don't speak. <laughs> it's supposed, it's supposed ball and it's supposed blast well. You get my point. So um, so don't don't point fingers at people. Now coming back to competition, actually, you have to take a step back and decide intentionally that you will not you will not fall for it. If you have materials that will help people, you share on the page. If people come and ask you, you're doing well for information, you know, counsel, you offer it. You're not also trying to please anybody, but you just need to be, I mean, it, it's, it's just being a good human being. Mm. So give, give the ones give. you have. Give, give the ones you have. Don't, and then um, people like to say there is this kind of healthy competition. Yes, I agree. But it, it's not so common. So healthy competition, it, it feels like, oh, I see Nimi going to read now. I'm motivated. I want to go and read. That's what healthy competition looks like. But sometimes what happens in medical school, people feel like, because you're reading too much or you're doing very well, you're limiting the, their chances of passing. You get. I, I've, I've heard this like a number of times. I'm like, guy, really, why would you be thinking like the fact that some people are doing so well? Maybe to now make college, you know, set a higher standard. It's, it's not true. It's not true. That sort of mindset is not, is not very healthy. It's not very healthy. You are discouraging those who are trying to do well. Meanwhile, you yourself, you're not also willing to push yourself you know to do so well so competition is a no-no unhealthy competition is a no-no competition is also linked um, to the fear of missing out so um and I, I would also tie this to knowing yourself so some persons like sometimes now we are doing tutorials and some people are complaining that oh and um, they did not put it at the favorable time you know if the tutorial is holding now uh, we would want to show up so it's like they should stop the tutorial because it's not conducive yes. For, yes, me. for me now that's fear of missing out you don't want other people to, to have something because, because you, you you're not be there so that is it's totally wrong if you don't want to show up he doesn't want to call names don't show we know up. the names I, I didn't say anything. <laughs> if you don't want to show up don't show up and don't disturb anybody don't make noise about it people want to learn tutorial may not if it's not your thing no wahala, just be where you are and do what works for you. Again, I said don't be, don't feel that it's pride when you're owning your strength. Some people go for tutorials and they learn for three hours. They come out, you ask them what they learned. They can't remember anything. You actually just wasted the three hours because you know that you're the kind of student that if you sit down to read, you probably appreciate the information more. Now, some person's tutorial, as they come out, you ask them, they can remember everything the lecturer said verbatim you get now those persons tutorial is it's for them they should attend so mm -hmm. overcome that fear of missing out you're, you're trying to say oh some people should not learn because it's not suitable for you it's still linked to that underlying competitive nature that we tend to have generally as medical students now um, the last is hard work so under under hard work 
I would I would talk about reading and recalling here because mm -hmm. if I've said all those things and I don't actually talk about you sitting down because everybody reads to be honest everybody in medical school we actually read whether you start early start late some will be asking for slides 2 a.m. 3 a.m. everybody <laughs> reads and they still blast you know different strokes for different persons so but then more than reading you're interested in actually remembering what you read and reproducing it so um and now peculiar peculiar to us in medical school i know other departments are hard you know honestly pharmacy engineering much respect to all they have to deal with but one thing that is striking here is the volume of work we have to do sometimes i think it's unfair i think it's unfair in final year for instance in surgery we have cardiothoracic urology bones and plastic orthopedics and accessology we have um ENT, we have ophthalmology, we have general surgery, we have pediatric surgery, we have public health. Public health has like eight or nine specialties on that. We haven't got medicine. Medicine, with all medicine is like the whole of pediatric It's the whole gym. everything. So we are going for this exam and we'll have to prepare in maybe like four weeks at most if we are very lucky. They give us six weeks. Ideally it's two weeks. These days they, they try to they be try, you know try. nicer and they negotiate with us. So the volume of information you have to deal with, it's much. It's crazy. So now you would have to pay attention to how should how best do I recall this information? Now for different kind of for different courses mm -hmm. and depending on the nature of what you're trying to recall, different strategies will apply. So people talk about repetition a lot. I agree, repetition works, but what it majorly does is helps to sharpen your understanding. Okay. Yes. It helps to sharpen your understanding, but if, for instance, there are 10 features of this condition that you want to know, repetition will help you. You might remember three or four, but if you really want to have it at your fingertips, you must code it. There will be any money. So, you now see that for things that have to do with you know, making the list or stating the clinical features of this and this, mnemonics will be better for you. For things that have to do with, um, let's say, dates, Sometimes it might be splitting them into parts or associating it with something like your birthday. Now, if you're not aware of this, if you're not aware of some of these things, you will not apply them. And the way the mind works, the way God made your mind, your mind is really very sharp. Once you start to think, okay, how do I recall this? Something just enters your mind. It might be an event. It might be something related to a saving. Now, once you tie it to that, you can't forget it because it's your own you generated that knowledge you were not trying after having read it now it went in and then it came out so it's difficult for you to forget, forget. even if they just start you waking up from sleep what is this you say it because it's your own but when you just rely on you know repeat re repetition is not really effective now there are other things the famous technique which talks about um when you read if you teach someone you recall you actually do recall a lot but I, am, I, I think that there's a bias for that for medical school because everything you're reading, you can't be teaching people. If you, you, won't, you won't have the time. Yeah. So for the ones that are really difficult, and when you find somebody having a challenge in that area, feel very free to offer to teach. Once you teach something, you actually do record it for a very, very long time. I may not be able to say all the strategies you know to recall, but you can look them up. They are, you know, ideas and stuff on Google and all that would help you if you actually want to pay attention to retaining the information you have and then reproducing it in exams. I think that's that's most of that's most of. I hope I I hope I've not missed you know anything. So well, that's yeah. Those are the secrets. So you okay, know, okay, yes, that's awesome. But I want to ask. I hope I'm not on this course. If you were to just say. In as much as you've said every other thing, we're talking about that just that extra thing. If you were to say you just have one minute mm -hmm. and you want to tell your younger brother one thing that will you want him to learn, that you want him to do in this medical school to make him a better person, a better doctor overall, one thing. That's that's quite a, I have to think about that, yes, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's fine. Um, I 
think everything is tied to passion. Hmm. Yes. Everything is tied to passion. People lose the passion along the line. The way I hear your fire, feel like the cast is scammed you. So <laughs> really, really the problem is not it's, it's tied to interest and passion. So if you if you maintain that, if you can sustain the passion you came into medical school with. At the beginning, all of us, you know, we were all bubbling and going for ninth classes. As at the five, probably only like three or four persons mm. just to see ourselves in those. Now, it's not like we like so far ahead, but the thing about stepping out at that point is that it leaves you alone. I'm sure the name is reading in a room now. Plenty of, some people just come and you know, mm. keep knocking and knocking and interrupting. They know themselves. They know themselves. Interrupting, interrupting and all. So the passion would sustain every other thing. Your ability to stay disciplined, yeah. you know, to be diligent to go the extra mile to be aware of all these things are sort of tied to your passion and then also um for those who believe in god because if i'll be honest there are some exams i've written like um anatomy i was actually on the 69 you get and the lecturers had this thing of if you did not reach 70 they are not calling you so somehow they called me and they were arguing amongst them said, oh why did you call him and in my mind i was like look at this one god has confused you people and then eventually they gave it Sometimes I, I really did not e expect them, so I'll just put in my best, and the little one left. God just, you know, does the checkmate for me, and that's it. So I, I believe it will be the. I'd like to ask as well. How do you manage to stay consistent? It's been eight years, gospel. Me and you have been here. Me and get tired, gospel. How do you manage? Okay, I, I, okay. Sometimes you actually have a lot of reasons to be consistent for me because um. You know, it's it's easier starting something or more difficult finishing. So yes. when I look at my younger colleagues, those coming behind me, those persons who will probably benefit from your story, the way you approach medical school, I realize it's it's actually more than me. Doing well is not just it's not just about yourself, it's not just about your certificate. In the larger scheme of things, when we finish medical school, all the BGS and the distinctions, yeah, they may help you, but it doesn't really count. But the fact that persons, we still see Dr. Brian today and we are inspired, you know, you will hear of Dr. Musa, you remain inspired. So, and then you see that that your little action is like a snowballing effect, effect. that more generations will probably be determined to be well. excellent students, which will eventually mean there will be excellent doctors and better patient care. So it's like a large cascade in the broader scheme of things. Guys, yeah. I feel like they didn't tell me this one. And now, <laughs> <laughs> now I'm now feeling like, ah, guys, I don't know if this one will be done. I don't know if I can utilize all these things. Thank you so much for watching. I, I, I appreciate you all. I'm sure Gospel also appreciates yeah, that you're watching you right now. Watching. Please, if you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe. 98% of my viewers are not subscribed. Please just subscribe, I beg you. And then give this video a thumbs up. You can also write particular questions if you want me to ask him anything. Send me a message. And guys, I love you and I really appreciate you. Thank you. Good night.